In the opening scene, a group of police officers surround a residence and apprehend a man with severe facial blisters. The distressed man attempts to explain that there is something in the water, but the cops disregard him and transport him away in their vehicle. The scene then shifts to six months later, and we are introduced to a farming family living in Teleco Plains, Tennessee. The youngest son, Zach, is seen collecting cow dung in the yard when his stepbrother, Cyrus, playfully shoves him onto a dung cart. Yeah! This is how we have fun! This leads to a physical altercation between the two, but they are soon stopped by their stern and pious stepfather, Nathan, as Cyrus is his biological son. Nathan takes his side and beats up his stepson for fighting. Just then, Zach's sister Alice summons all of them for breakfast. At the table, Nathan recites his prayer and begins eating, while his wife Frances has her gaze fixated on their farmhand Mike. It appears that she has a crush on him. She wants Mike to go even further down south. A short while later, a real estate agent named Charlie Davidson, who is also the head of Chamber of Commerce, arrives there to buy the food grown on their farm. He talks to Francis and tries to persuade her to sell their farmland. However, she dismisses him and sends him away. At night, Francis visits her children's rooms to kiss them goodnight. When she enters Zach's room, she inquires about the morning's incident. Zach confides in her and tells her that he is fed up with Nathan's strictness. In response, Francis advises advises him to show respect to Nathan, because he has accepted them into his family. Later on, Frances preens in front of the mirror and goes to bed with her husband, hoping for intimacy. However, Nathan stops her abruptly and claims that it's a man's job to initiate the process. Because he used the word initiate, the mood is killed and they go to bed. This saddens her and she is unable to sleep thereafter. As a result, she walks out and sneaks into Mike's nearby shack. Mike suddenly appears appears from behind and starts touching her. Francis also gets carried away, and the two start getting intimate. Now Mike knows how to initiate. Meanwhile, Nathan wakes up to the sound of the window shuddering and finds his wife missing. As the weather worsens, Zack is also roused from his sleep. Looking out the window, he is shocked to witness a large meteorite crashing onto their property, emitting an eerie glow. Zack rushes to seek help from their neighbor, Dr. Alan Forbes, informing him of the incident. Nathan also goes outside to investigate and spots his wife coming out of Mike's dwelling, making him realize that she's cheating on him. However, he opts not to react and proceeds toward the meteorite along with his son. Upon closer examination, they find it to be a large sphere with a tough outer shell. Alan advises caution and suggests waiting for an accurate examination. Might not be a ball, might be a square. The following morning, Charlie pays a visit to Alan at his clinic to talk about the mysterious mysterious meteorite. When Alan says that he wants to alert the Environmental Protection Agency, Charlie attempts to dissuade him. He fears that his clients will not buy the land there, which would make him lose a lot of money. He encourages Alan to examine the object by himself and figure out if experts need to be involved. Following this, Alan, Charlie, and Nathan's families gather around the meteorite for further examination. Alan strikes the meteorite with a hammer, causing a foul-smelling liquid to ooze out. Later, in the day, Alan tells Charlie that he has conducted numerous tests, but is unsure about what to look for. Hearing this, Charlie suggests leaving the object as it is and avoiding involvement of authorities. Alan's wife Esther also manipulates him to remain silent, because talking about it might decrease their property's value. At night, the meteorite's hard shell once again emits a glow and dissolves into a luminous gel-like substance that seeps into the oil. Zack witnesses this with astonishment and senses that something is wrong. The next morning, Alan finds that the meteorite has vanished. He then visits Nathan's home and theorizes that the mysterious object was actually a waste tank dropped from an airplane. Hearing this, everyone begins laughing, except for Zack, who is sure that the object was not just ordinary waste. As the situation calms down, everyone gets back to their work. Nathan starts working on his farm, watering his crops, and feeding his livestock. One day, an employee from the Tennessee Valley Authority named Carl Willis arrives in the town. He is here to assess the land's suitability for a new water reservoir. Upon learning of his arrival, Charlie approaches him and offers assistance with the project. Carl, however, emphasizes the confidential nature of his work and the potential termination of the project if any interference is detected by the TVA. Despite this, Charlie remains unfazed and offers to drive him around the city. On the other hand, Francis goes to pick up some vegetables 
vegetables from their garden for cooking. To her surprise, the vegetables have grown exceptionally well and are unusually large in size. She brushes it aside though, assuming that Mike must have just seeded them with his big old willy. She then selects some for her meal preparation. While cutting open a large cabbage, she is shocked to discover that the inside is completely rotten and inedible. Perplexed, Francis attempts to cut the tomatoes, but brown liquid suddenly squirts out of them on her face. I could keep going with the Mike jokes, but I will stop here. Later, while dining, Zach senses something wrong with the food. Furthermore, the well water is cloudy and has an unpleasant taste. Alice also acknowledges the change in taste, but their stern father forces them to consume it. That same night, Zach, who is unwilling to drink the home water, sneaks into Alan's place and fills a bottle of clean water for himself and for his sister. The following morning, Nathan is watering his crops and is delighted to see their great growth. He thanks God for what he believes is a bountiful harvest, unaware of the reality. Just then, he hears the screaming voice of Cyrus, prompting him and Zach to rush towards him. They find that their pet horse has become violent and is attacking Cyrus. Scared, they hurriedly help him out through a barbed wire, saving his life. In the afternoon, Charlie stops by Nathan's farm and again tries to convince him to sell the property. As usual, Nathan declines his request and showcases the year's abundant harvest. He even offers Charlie a juicy looking apple to taste it. Charlie takes a bite, only to be disgusted by the presence of worms inside. Shocked, Nathan cuts open a couple more apples, only to discover that it's all rotten. In the meantime, Alice, as usual, goes to the hen coop to feed the chickens. But this time, she notices something unusual as the hens exhibit strange behavior. Despite this, she proceeds to feed them. Not long after, the hens suddenly turn aggressive and attack the young girl. Her screams reach her father and brothers, prompting them to rush to her rescue. Nathan carries Alice back to the house while Zach notices a cloudy liquid oozing from the dead hens. In the aftermath, Dr. Allen examines Alice and provides her with some medication. During this, he notices that Francis has lost a lot of weight and looks very unwell. In addition, she has developed a large boil on her face that alters her facial features. Concerned, Alan suggests she visit his clinic, but she remains silent, fearing her strict husband. Later in the evening, the entire family is sitting in the living room when Francis starts behaving strangely. Shortly after, the family notices her sewing her own hand to the socks, which causes bleeding. Zach and Nathan attempt to stop her, but she violently pushes them away. Eventually, Cyrus and Nathan manage to grab her and drag her to her room. Worried by his his mother's deteriorating condition, Zach rushes to Alan's place to seek assistance. Sensing the urgency, Alan grabs his medical kit and hurries to their house. However, Nathan and Cyrus act as if nothing happened and ask the doctor to leave. After his departure, Nathan slaps the boy, scolding him for dragging the strangers in their private matters. While walking back home, Alan sees an unusual sight, steam rising from Nathan's well. Sensing something amiss, he fetches a bottle full of water as a sample to be analyzed at a nearby laboratory. The next day, Carl is seen surveying the local area for the planned water reservoir. During this, he feels thirsty, so he goes to the nearby Nathan's farmhouse to get a glass of water. He knocks on the door, only to find that it's open. Carl slowly enters the kitchen and helps himself from the kitchen faucet. But just then, he is attacked and nearly killed by a mentally unstable Francis. Fortunately, Nathan intervenes in the nick of time and sends his wife to the room. He then asks what Carl is doing here, but the latter is so scared that he forgets about his thirst and runs away. As the days pass, Frances's health deteriorates and the blisters on her face also increase. She speaks incoherently of things and eats in an unsettling manner. Nevertheless, Nathan ignores all of it as he believes that it's her punishment from God for her infidelity. Nathan and Cyrus also seem to have started being infected by the poisoned food and water. As Scar Scars begin to appear on their faces. In contrast, Zach manages to protect himself and Alice from the infection by consuming clean water and food obtained from Alan's house. One night, Nathan sits beside his wife, whom he has tied to the bed, and reads her a few lines from the Bible. Thou shall not tie thine's loved one to the- uh, I'm gonna skip this part. He eventually falls asleep, after which Francis manages to break free from her restraints. Meanwhile, Zach awakens to the strange noises and has heads downstairs to investigate. There, he is suddenly confronted by his mother, whose 
face is now turned into a pus-covered mask with disheveled hair. She has become so violent that she starts attacking her son with a fire poker. The commotion wakes up Nathan, who then forcibly drags and locks her in an underground bunker. Alice witnesses all of this from the stairs, which makes her cry. The following day, Alan visits the lab to obtain the test results for the water sample. The lab assistant informs him that the water contains an unidentified element, which is altering its metabolic properties and molecular structure. Realizing the potential threat, Alan rushes to contact Carl for assistance, but he cannot reach him. Meanwhile, Charlie shows up at Alan's house and seeks Esther's help in convincing Nathan to sell their property. Esther agrees, and the two head to Nathan's farmhouse, only to be attacked by infected dogs that have turned violent. In an attempt to save herself, Esther runs, but she is caught and fatally mauled by the dogs. On the other hand, Charlie enters the bunker, unaware of the horrors awaiting him. He is soon attacked by a scary-looking Francis, who kills him and devours his flesh. In the evening, Zack returns home with some healthy food and clean water for his sister. After feeding her, he decides to check on his mother. However, before he can do so, he's confronted by his stepfather, who has now succumbed to the infection. As a result, he starts attacking Zack, but the latter manages to escape. At the same time, Alice hears a noise outside her room. She opens the door, only to be startled by Cyrus, who has also lost his sanity. He charges toward the young girl, but just as he's about to harm her, Zack walks in with a bat and subdues his half-brother. Following this, he hides Alice in a closet and promises to return with help. At that moment, Alan arrives at the scene, looking for the children, but tragically, Nathan appears from behind and strikes him with a hammer, killing him on the spot. Nathan then corners Zack one last time and is about to kill him, but just then, Carl comes to the rescue and stabs Nathan with a pitchfork. Amidst the chaos, smoke begins emerging from the basement and the house starts to crumble. Zack and Carl rush upstairs to retrieve Alice, but are confronted by the awakened Cyrus. In an act of self-defense, Zack pushes Cyrus off the stairs, seemingly incapacitated him. After this, Carl carries Alice and rushes to his car while Zack looks for his mother. To his despair, he finds his mother's corpse dissolving into liquid. Heartbroken, Zack prepares to flee the collapsing house, but Nathan once again confronts him. The boy manages to dodge his attacks and impales the pitchfork deeper into his body before making his way out. Right then, Carl comes back to rescue Zack and the trio drives away moments before the house collapses. Several months later, we see Carl, who is hospitalized because he also happened to drink a small amount of the farm's water. The man from the opening scene is revealed to be none other than Carl, who suffered a nervous breakdown due to the infectious water before being hospitalized. The authorities in the news reassure the public that the well containing the poisonous water has been destroyed and there is no longer any danger to the people. In the final scene, the ground and trees around the farm house begin to fall and break apart, revealing more of the luminous liquid spreading across the surface. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.